it was only recently that we started discovering exoplanets surrounding other stars. Since then, we have discovered over 4,000 of these exoplanets using the Transient Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS for short. Current theory holds that stars form within dust and gas clouds, and that planets are formed in this process. It was considered implausible for planets to form in a star that was way beyond the galactic disk. Now, for the first time, they have discovered a star that seems to orbit at an incredible distance from the galactic plane, and also has a planet orbiting around it that seems to be a rocky body about the same size as Earth. But is there a different way of looking at this star? An international team of astronomers have identified a star named LHS 1815. This star seems to exist far beyond the galactic plane. More incredibly, they detected that it may have a small companion which they called LHS 1815 b. So why is this star so remarkable? Most galaxies are depicted as a disk in which all the stars are formed. The disk tends to be quite narrow. In the narrow band is where all the stars and plasma can be located. Beyond this there is a band where stars can be found but are much less common and are believed to be much older, around 10 billion years old. These stars tend to be poor in metals which is why they are believed to be older stars. They also tend to have a much higher proper motion than normal stars and it is believed that they orbit in a way which would make them pass through this galactic disk making it orbit both above and below the galactic plane. Remarkably, this system is close to Earth, only about 97 light years away. More remarkable is that rocky exoplanets are very rare, and to find one in the extremities of the galaxy makes it all the more remarkable. Using tests, they were able to observe a periodic transition event which they attribute to a planet. It shows no luminosity, so this rules out a companion star. When they analysed the periodicity, they realised that it had an orbit period of just over three days. It is important to note that they did not make direct measurements of the planet itself, but used a transient effect to estimate, based on previous data, what the orbital radius would be. From this they deduce what the mass of the planet is and they estimate that it is approximately the same radius as Earth, but around four times more dense. Earth has a density of around five grams per centimeter cubed, and it is composed of a combination of elements. The most abundant in the crust is silicon, then aluminium, and then iron, as well as oxygen in the form of oxides. Now this planet has a density in the region of platinum, making it less of a rocky body and more of a metal body planet. Let's take a step back and first discuss the motion of the star itself. For a star to orbit in a manner that makes it move up and down through the galactic plane is highly unusual in the conventional model. All the stars in the galactic plane are thought to orbit around the centre. It is interesting that they are inferring this type of motion from what at this stage is simply a very small sample of its motion. Now part of this is based on a larger collection of stars that they have identified and mapping their collective motion, and then making assumptions about the motion of this one star. If we examine the motion, there are two elements to this. Firstly, the motion above and below the plane, and secondly, its motion around the galactic centre. When we look at both of these, what springs out is that this shape that they are describing is a toroidal shape. So how could we explain this sort of motion? If we examine Don Scott's Bessel function model, we know that the magnetic field changes and that there are areas where the motion will be more azimuthal, creating an orbit. We believe that along the galactic plane, the filaments flow towards the center. We also believe that this sits within the pinched area of a galactic filament. So could it be that above the galactic plane and below it, there is less pinching and therefore this may sit in a different shell, which may be more azimuthal. How are the shells affected in a pinch area and what do they look like just outside of it? And this is one of the questions that we raised when we looked at Don Scott's Bessel function model. One other aspect to consider is that all the stars that we have detected in this region all show a higher proper motion compared to other stars. Add into this fact that this star is a red dwarf star 
and you will start to recognise something that we have covered before, the mysterious vanishing stars. These were all red stars with a much higher proper motion than normal stars. Is there a connection between these two? For the majority of the stars in this region, they are far from the galactic plane, yet they're still shining. This implies that they must be part of an active current system. So where is it coming from? If this star was simply ejected, why is it still shining so far from the galactic plane? We know that many galaxies have these extended disks. We also know that there are streams of stars that seem to surround the Milky Way and other galaxies. Does this imply that the structure of a galaxy is not simply the disk we see, but is in fact a much larger structure? If we examine the Sun, we know that it creates a heliopause as a spherical bubble around it. Galaxies have a similar halo. In the solar system, we see the majority of planets and objects orbiting in one plane, but there are other objects that orbit much further away from this plane and that cross in and out through the plane, like comets. One thing to realise is that galaxies are not static objects sitting still in space. If we consider that a galaxy sits at the centre of a Birkeland current, as the current moves along, so does the galaxy. In some sense, you could argue that the motion that we see in the rotation of the arms is due to the motion of the shells within the Birkeland current itself, slowly twisting around. If the galaxy pinches this structure, then we return to the question of what the field looks like slightly in front and behind of this moving galaxy. Are these stars simply following the field lines created by these? If these fields are further from the pinch, then will they have a lower current density? So does this explain why the stars are redder? This may also account for the lower metallicity, as less transmutation would take place due to the lower power input. Now this star is not the only one to be found out there. It is currently thought that about 10% of the Milky Way's mass resides in this outer region. So again, any model would have to explain how these stars could function away from the galactic plane. Now for some of these stars, it could be argued that we are again in the murky water of distance measurements. But certainly this star is close enough that a multitude of measuring techniques are possible, and these do indicate that this star is a little outside of the galactic plane, but not as much in comparison to the other stars. If these stars really do have such an inclined orbit, and this one only recently passed through the disk, why do we not see more disturbance from this voyage through the plane? 10% of the mass represents a large set of stars set on a collision course with a galactic plane, yet it seems to be largely unaffected by these. How often could this occur before the flat structure is smeared out due to the gravitational disturbances, especially if you consider that these are supposed to be older stars? This idea of a thin and a thick disk is still contentious, and in a 2012 paper, scientists performed an analysis of the data to suggest that there was no evidence for a thick and thin structure, but instead that the density of the disk slowly falls off. The question then is how extreme could a Bessel function Birkeland current become? Is it possible that there are smaller Birkeland currents that have a much higher amplitude than the ones closer to the galactic plane? These stars would therefore be on a motion which would set them up and down through the galactic plane, but more extreme than we would see for those closer, like the Radcliffe wave. Let's talk a little bit about the star and its planet. In this study they imply that this must be an old star with low metallicity. These are stars thought to have formed in the early days of the universe, when there was less heavy elements around. If this is the case, the planet itself presents a serious problem for this model. How could a planet be formed with such a high density? Assuming no additional magical forces are involved to squash the atoms of only this planet and not the star, it would be fair to assume that they would have formed in a similar manner. So how is it possible that this would create a planet with more complex atoms that are more dense and were not supposed to be around at this time? And again, if we look at densities, we are talking about metals. Now we must remember that the inferred mass, radius and orbital radius are all based on the transient data, and they then extrapolate to a best fit model. We know that something is orbiting at about every three days. This means it must be close to the star. 
the amount it dims would also allow them to infer a radius of the planet. So something in their model simply does not add up. If we examine electric stellar evolution, then is it possible that this planet was created in a stellar fissioning or ejection event? And this would have happened at a time of a much higher current density, possibly with two active stars. As a star moves to an area of lower density, could it cause one of the stars to simply turn off? Now one other thing that springs to mind is that maybe the periodicity that they detect is not from an object passing in front of the star, but is instead an interaction between the orbiting body and the star itself. Similar to how we discussed how variable stars could be explained by a discharge between two stars, is this a system where the orbiting body is able to draw more current in part of its orbit, making the star appear dimmer at regular intervals. This would therefore mean that the planet doesn't have to transit across it, and therefore its mass and its size become irrelevant. There is much to ponder in these stars that lie further out from the galactic plane. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.